okay so now if you look at the one field called dependents did you remember that we have worked on the dependents right yes yes and dependents normally coming in a different i'm i'm removing the another unnecessary uh, thing so we have a small report mm -hmm. okay so now we have only dependents and if i click here as a dependents and i click the name First legal name. And relationship. <clears throat> and click OK. And run. Then you see that I have bringing like the relationship in the different lines, right? And now assume that you just have to bring this information in this field. Instead of coming in three different fields, you wanted to bring spouse in one and uh, somewhere here on, on this row and not the three one, right? So right. in order to do that, we have a different uh, functions different calculated fields and this is a different object by the way like the the dependent is an object so i click on the plus i go here on the create calculated fields and i say that dependent is spouse and i go to the function true false So dependent is spouse, so I'm just making a one function called dependent is uh, spouse and true false. And I will click here on dependent. Uh, right. uh, we, we, we have to first uh, bring the dependent in into the employee uh, structure first, like on this object. So in order to do that, I have to create multiple things. Spouse dependent. And I look for the lookup related value. It's called lookup related values. I, and when you make this thing, you click on the LRVs. Lookup related values, what it does, it will go to that object which we are looking for and then we have to get a return value so i'm going to click on the dependents and then i'll bring it here and now this is like someone has already created this field and we are not going to use this field on the worker what we have to bring we have to bring it from the different object dependent object so in this field like lrv we have to go and create a one more field called dependents esi extract single instance what this will see it will bring a one instance from the dependent right Right. And now I mentioned dependent here. And I go and sort it on the effective date. And I'm going to click on the conditions. And I create one more condition so that what will do this depend uh, calculated field only bring uh, spouses.
and this is true false and we look for spouse and click OK and now what you need probably the legal name and click OK and click OK now what will happen that the legal spouse name will come here only make sense yes do you understand or you want me to explain it again once more can you explain it one more time yes i know okay so look at this portion this is in another object okay i'm just bringing up like a one blank presentation here okay so consider this uh, mm -hmm. this is one report one excel field right yes and it has like your name employee id uh, and a lot of other things right yes Then we have another field, another object. Consider this is a sheet one, Excel sheet one, and it's a sheet two, right? Mm -hmm. Which has your employee ID and dependence information. So what will you do? You will do something like this. We look up employee ID and bring data from sheet. Correct? Correct. Okay, so in this case, if you look at this, this is a dependent object and this is like the main object. What we are going to do, we have to call this object and bring the information in this object. But we want only spouse to bring in this field. It's not possible that we bring all three, three persons in the same field, right? Mm -hmm. That will be look like the same. Make sense? Yes. So what we did, what we did, uh, I'll bring this uh, field here. in this field here in this field here okay first of all this is like a extract single instance that means it will find out like a one record per employee right it has a dependence and it will bring all the things in the dependent but where this condition is true correct and the condition is Relationship is a spouse. Right? Right. When the relationship is spouse, it will bring here. And if you have a more than one relationship, uh, like there are two things which are uh, successful, it will only bring the first instance or the last occurrence or the specific occurrence. Um, hmm. Social dependent spouse. 
So the dependent is okay. Yes. Wait, can you go back up? Uh, um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. This is a condition. Right. So this is pulling from another report. It is pulling from the another object. This is object. See, the object is dependent. And see, the object we are using here is employee. Right. So we bring the object. Object consider that is an, an another Excel sheet, and we put like a condition if this is a spouse, bring it to the to this sheet, and then take it to here. Right. And once it's coming here, we say that what information you have to look up means what you want to look up from this value and what you want to return. And return is a last name. Understood. Any question on this? These three things are mostly mostly used in the uh, in the reports, or it is really required in the system. Do you want me to create it one more in front of you? Yeah, yeah. Can we do that? Yes, we we let's let's bring the age of the employee too, right? Okay. I click here. Okay. I click here. I go to the create calculated field, and I'm going to use CF stands for calculated field. Uh, pause age and it's mm. a LRV and click OK and then I go here as on this and bring one more calculated field mm -hmm. which is called CF uh, ESI actually I don't need it I'm just creating it now. I don't need it because that is already there. I'll explain it to you in a while. Yes, yeah, yeah. And now I feel like dependents. And now I can use the same true false condition, right? <coughs> because it's it's on the same object. It's on the same object employees no dependent because we are bringing up like a dependent object the object source object is dependents i see you yeah, see this okay. you are dependent. extracting extracting uh -huh. dependents into the employee oh into into the boy okay yeah into the right. employee. I'll, I'll i'll show you okay. click ok and click OK uh, and age and click OK. Click OK. And now I'll just go and refresh this. And look at this. Mm -hmm. And if you look at this information, like this object, which I say into the employee dependent ESI, I go mm -hmm. on these three dots and click edit. And if I click on employee, I can take it here too. Because this is into the employee, like we are extracting data for employee. And I right. click here, okay. And when I run, it will bring up the object information for spouse, which is Pat McNeil. It's an object and it's a value from those, those objects. Mm -hmm. I see. So actually, this was the main object. From this object, we extract a single object like this one uh -huh. on the basis of condition, and then we bring up the information from there. Understood. Okay. So this is called extract single instance, extract uh, calculated fields, and true false. This true. is like a very basics. True false. Yeah, three three calculated fields we have worked together. ESI, LRV, and true false. Now I'm going to create one more information. 
where can I you, wanted to bring. Yeah. Can you explain true false again? Sure. When yeah. we are going to this true false, it is on one object called dependence, whatever object is. It will always make it like the things either true or false. So you have to find out the relationship of spouse, then it will be true. If you wanted to, it's a condition, right? That what what condition is true? Oh, I same see. filters, same filters which we added here on the the reports. Uh huh. Same filter which we have added on the reports. That's it. I see. Understood. Any condition you make it here, it's the same. Comparison value, field, and amount. So if I'll go here, it's a field, it's an operator, it's a comparison value and value. Uh huh. <coughs> okay. Now I'm going to edit it again, and I'm going to work on the dependent. M multi instance extract multi instance EMI extract multi instance previously we bring up one information only for one thing now we are bringing up multi instances like more than one uh -huh. click OK so it will be operational type source field is dependent for example The, he asked for the condition and I say that any is true. I can make the condition too, but I'm just saying that bring everything here. I see. And I click OK. And OK. And run. So see that it will bring all the information from this dependent, but now there's no use if I have to bring everything together like without having any condition, right? Why not using mm -hmm. this this thing? So it is generally for having a different type of conditions. So what I'll do, I'll go here again. And I'm going to, to edit one condition like there. I will create a one more true false condition for the report. This is my multi instance, right? This one. Right. I it see. brings three things. So I go here and I go edit it. Edit this report. Uh, sorry, calculated field. And I create mm -hmm. a one more condition here true false. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. So I'm for searching for relationship and uses like in the selected list and again child. Okay. So when I selected for child, now my same report will bring only two information which are child. Make sense? Yes. So this is like three, this is one, this is two. But you cannot bring these two in one field like this way. You have to bring it like, like this, always. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Now I'll go here and I edit it. And I go N plus here and I'll go to create one more calculated field and I go to these functions first. We have done the aggregated calculation, build date, concat text, convert currency, numbers, uh, date constant, date difference, uh, EMI, extract multi instance, extract single instance, format date, uh, format text, format number, increment, decrement, uh, 
uh, then we work on the lookup related value okay numeric constant uh, substring text uh, text constant text length true false right uh, I think yeah most of it I remember that we did touch upon yeah so now i'm going to use more complex things which is like uh, let's do with the count related instance first awesome if i'll go here and i click on the count uh, <coughs> aggregate and the count related instance these are two so i'm going to work on the count related instance funds dependent count so what actually we want we wanted to check the count how many persons in this dependence like how many dependents are for for this person so that means we wanted to do to do a count and it can go for all instance or you can create a condition too, like a true false condition like a child how many child in this so you can click on on those areas and i click okay mm -hmm. click okay and going to refresh it now so look at this field now it's click counted three because it has a three dependence if i put like a this function in in that count related instance mm -hmm. then it will count two so let's try to change it and instead of dependent i wanted to use my calculated field like which we have created it right yes dependent emi right. Okay. And click OK. And then just do refresh. So now it should be counting like two. Or if it is more than two. Mm -hmm. So this person, like Teresa, has one. It's a runtime counting, right? It's not Correct. a hard code value. Uh huh. Look at this one, the last record. There is a one uh, child, so it will just bring one. Uh huh. Okay. Yes. And, and so this is a count related instance. Similarly, we can do some related aggregate instances. Like, let's try. Give me a second, please. Okay. Now I'm going to edit it and I am going to do one small modification here. Click plus like before count, I'm just going to do a sum related agreements, uh, aggregation. So aggregate related instance, ARI, dependent age sum. Aggregation is always some like you you wanted to to aggregate them, right? Correct. So there should be some numbers or something dependents Condition I don't want like I, I'll just say any is true Or nothing and Field to aggregate what field you want to aggregate on this this instance. I wanted to aggregate age Okay, mm -hmm. there's no age So I click OK. Wait, uh, why would the can you go uh, can you go back a page? Yep, give me oh. a second. I'll go back back then. 
I'll go back again. So, yep. Yeah. So, why was the dependent also employee? No, no. Dependent is not employee. It's an aggregate. Aggregation is you you try to aggregate the things, right? Uh, dependent is not the employee. Oh. Fields to aggregate. Okay. I see. You are combining the different objects together. Right, right, right. Aggregating the different objects, right? Yes. That so understood. That's what we, yeah, so, so we are aggregating the dependents. And we are de depending from the source field as employee, and then we are aggregating dependents. Okay. Normally, what I can do, I will edit it once more, and I'll use a different object instead of dependent. I'll use the history. Okay. And I use like uh, compensation is a salary change history. I'm going to use that object and I'm going to refresh it. And uh -huh. now it will bring all the compensation historical aggregation. Understood. <coughs> See? Make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Uh, the aggregation one is not a very commonly used objects or the, the calculated fields. Okay. And then <clears throat> I'll go and add one more. And now I'll look for <coughs> one more. Uh, business uh, object which is called evaluate expressions i click on the evaluate yeah. expression and uh -huh. here normally it's always true false Evaluate expression true false okay evaluate expression is true false what type of field we wanted to return for example <laughs> we we say that give a text and we'll say that uh, global field is Let's say text is this one, which is just a value. And I'll just say that if it is something true, like uh, let's take an example of if gender is true. Gender <coughs> is male. If gender is male. gender in the selected list it's a true true false condition i'm making and i'm saying male mm -hmm. and i'm saying if it is male then do a create calculated field and say text <coughs> constant male and text constant like the function i'm using a text constant uh huh like i'm just going to hard code that he oh. is a male and click OK and click OK. So what we'll do if it's a male, then it will send a text constant value. Otherwise, it will come a uh, uh, backslash, right? Co correct. And I run it. Yeah. Let's see. See, it's a, it's a backslash or he's a male. So it's more like a conditions. If A is true, then choose this. If B is true, choose this. It's a interesting. Yeah, it's a condition. This is again one of the important uh, calculated fields. Keith, <clears throat> you want me to show you again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's just saying that if this condition is true, 
then choose this else default value is this one choose the if condition is true, bring this, otherwise this. Text constant L. Okay, so, okay. I, I, I think I understand. Okay. The most important concept is the more you practice, the more you will get the concept. Uh, okay. The, yeah, the, the more you use it, like the more you will find out their, their details, like why we are using it. And of course, like in, in the course, we are actually covering these things so, so that you know that how to use it and what are the fundamentals for this. But the more you do the practice, the more you will be uh, uh -huh. using it. And it's a, always a science and art. It's a learning and your artistic view, like how to bring something is a is a this whole uh, report development task is. It's not only learning, like, you know, all the calculated fields, it's how you are using it, like how you are joining it. Uh huh. Right. You have to use your logical uh, system. Like, if I have to bring this, how I can do and what I can do here. Right. And then I'll use the. Uh, look up hierarchies or look up organizations. Uh, uh, calculated field. Look up organizations. And I use like on the company, uh, let's say on the cost center. Mm -hmm. And it will look for all the cost center hierarchy. Uh, I don't want to use something. I use like a, a top level <clears throat> organization. I need to find out that one for uh, Logan McNeil. Uh -huh. uh, organization and Cost location hierarchy. Let's say I'll use. I will going to use the location hierarchy. Uh, okay, nominal twenty five is the highest level. I, I I'm instead of using cost center, I'm going to use cost center, cost. or or maybe we use the supervisory. Supervisory is a more better concept because we use a lot of uh, supervisory organizations in the system. Okay. And this is your supervisory organizations like human resource and it will go up and the top level is global modern services okay okay and <clears throat> which level you want it to bring uh let's you know that the, the level so I'll bring yeah, up the I'll three level. Well, what are the three levels? Sorry, once more. Oh, well, what are the three levels? I I have no three idea. Three levels is like okay. The level <laughs> is like okay. Let me take it to to here. In your organization, you and you have your own manager, right? Yes. And then above manager level one is a manager level two. And then so on, you go till CEO or MD of the company, right? So these yes. are the levels. Understood. So <laughs> I'll go to refresh it. <coughs> Someone has done changes. Everything converted. So this is the human resource on the third level. So let's do like one more. Yes, please. <clears throat> and I'm going to do it for the first level. Level one. I'm going to refresh it.
someone has done some changes. Okay, now it's, it's a slightly complex thing. Okay, this is better. Okay, never mind. <clears throat> I'm just creating a quickly quest custom report to read, read it there. Okay, so employee ID. And I'm going to use the create calculated field again. Now uh, we are using a supervisory organization and the top level node is and I'm going to use the level one, right? We're going to use the level one, two, and three. Correct. No, okay. <clears throat> Let me know if, I, uh, if you are there's something wrong. Okay, Jones is a Alma matter. So I'm just going to use again like a one more report. The actually same report, but as a new uh, screen. I'm going to change it to the organization level from one to two. Okay. And I'm going to use this again. Now it will be at different levels. Make sense? Yes. So, so it means like if I'm going to bring this one, Johns. Uh huh. Actually, uh, the one thing which you are missing is a basic HCM training. That's why, uh, otherwise, you can understand the hierarchy quite a lot, quite easily. Uh, but of course, when you are working on the different things, you will understand this automatically with the passage of time. If I go towards uh, overview and organizations and look at this, uh, the team structure, if I click on the team structure, look at this. This is the first uh -huh. level, yes. level one. Actually not level one, it's a level something. If I'll start from the level Peggy, is our top level, level one. This is level two. Jill Jones is level three. This is level four. Make sense? Did you understand the levels? Yes. So this is like the, the organization structure we are bringing up. Any questions so far? No. Uh, by by the the course content, we have covered all the calculated fields which we should cover. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and we covered advanced report, simple report, and matrix report, right? Correct. And we know about how to share the reports. Correct. So technically, give me a second. Let me bring. 
my <clears throat> course content. Okay, let me bring. I don't know if we. <sighs> Okay, give me one second. Let me bring up like the the course. Mm -hmm. Did you remember that this portion and we add it like class and we do like display subgroups and it will uh, bring the bigger one and 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 the smaller one like on the groups level. Groups level. 